Um, I, I know we're going to open up. You've got a few things to say. It's obviously been a very busy week for you, so really thanks for taking the time. Uh, as I say, I know you can't see us, but there's a big audience of people here very interested to hear uh, you speak. And then we're going to open up to some Q&A. So uh, the stage is yours, and uh, welcome to Unbound Digital. Hey, thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Let me hear you. Come on, louder than that. Let's, <laughs> let's say hello. <laughs> All right. Sounds like four people in the room. OK. <laughs> so anyway, I'm Kim.com. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Mega Upload a site that I'm sure you have all been familiar with. And uh, at the peak, uh, the website Mega Upload and its sister websites had over 50 million uh, unique users daily. Um, it uh, accounted for about 4% of the global internet traffic. And I think Alexa had it ranked uh, at number 14. And even though uh, US users were only 7% of our total traffic, the US government decided uh, at some point to indict the founders of Mega Upload and to destroy uh, all the websites completely and take them offline. And over 100 million registered users have lost their files uh, overnight because of that uh, action. And all of that happened in you know, uh, a very uh, Hollywood-style fashion, with uh, helicopters landing on my lawn, uh, two of them, and uh, 72 cops storming uh, my home with uh, automatic assault rifles. And they had dogs with them. And it was a very scary scene. Uh, it was almost like uh, you know, out of a movie where you thought uh, there's a terrorist suspect or a drug lord being hunted. And uh, you know all of that uh, for copyright, which has traditionally been a civil matter and never uh, a criminal matter, especially in the context of the websites that I've created, which were basically user generated. And the US government uh, had the idea that they can charge me for the actions of my users, because they are not saying that I'm the one who committed the piracy and uploaded uh, movies, but uh, that uh, I'm still, however, responsible for all the nasty things that you guys did. So, uh, you know, uh, the story has been going on now for almost three years. Uh, I'm facing extradition from New Zealand, I'm fighting that. Uh, and on Thursday, I have a bail hearing where they are trying to lock me up and put me in jail again because my legal team has recently uh, resigned because I ran out of money after spending $10 million uh, to try and defend uh, myself. Uh, they have certainly you know, managed to drain my resources and dehydrate me. And without lawyers, I'm defenseless. So. They used that opportunity to try and uh, get my bail revoked. And uh, that's what I'm facing on Thursday. So this might be the last uh, public appearance. And you, if I go back to jail, you can tell everyone that that was the one. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to talk a little bit about internet freedom and where it's all heading. Uh, I mean, we know from Edward Snowden and uh, the NSA leaks uh, that you know, there's a mass surveillance apparatus uh, currently in place that is watching everything we do uh, in the digital world. And uh, there is a copyright lobby that is trying to um, you know, work with governments uh, to you know, protect their uh, property in a very aggressive fashion, in an almost extremist fashion, where it's all about you know, shutting down websites and putting people in jail for things that, you know, 10 years ago were really treated as a parking ticket almost. And uh, on the other side, we have uh, ISPs, uh, you know, broadband providers, uh, the large telcos that connect us with the internet that are trying to, you know, establish uh, a two class system where paying customers and paying service providers get faster, better quality internet, and everyone else is kind of on the slow lane. So, you know, internet freedom around the world is under attack because of these things. 
And my case has certainly radicalized me, and uh, I said this is not just about me, this is about trying to fight for internet freedom. So I started a political movement uh, called the Internet Party, and uh, we have challenged uh, the government here in New Zealand in the last election. Unfortunately, we failed uh, in September this year to get uh, to the 5% threshold. Uh, for a party that only started six months before the election, we only got 1.4% of the vote. So it wasn't very impressive, but it was, uh, you know, a start. And we're trying to take the Internet Party global and, uh, you know, fight for Internet freedom and provide the citizenry with a tool to fight back against, uh, you know, our rights being undermined. So that's what I'm working on. And if I go back to jail on Thursday, then, uh, you know, make sure you send me some cards uh, with appreciation for what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and that's all I have to say. So if you guys want to, you know, jump into the Q&A, then I'm happy to do that. Perfect. I think we've got an audience uh, very keen to speak. So let's just have some hands up here, and um, I'll bring the mic to you, and then we can uh, do some Q&A. So first questions, please. Don't be shy. We can warm up. Everyone feeling very shy this morning? None of the four wants to ask anything? There's only three now. No. <laughs> I'll start with the question then. Obviously, yeah. uh, Monday's um, a German was a, a bit of a success. Why do you think they've uh, targeted you so specifically uh, in, uh, in taking a civil claim into criminal realms? Well, first of all, I'm an easy target because of my flamboyance. You know, I live the big life. I love a great lifestyle. So, you know, when you travel around on super yachts and in private jets and you have number plates that say God and stoned and mafia on your cars, uh, you know, that, that's probably not the best way to keep a low profile. Uh, in addition to that, I'm German. So, uh, you know, Hollywood... Uh, they have uh, something with German villains. Uh, you know that most Bond villains are Germans. And then, uh, you know, of course, the websites were based in Hong Kong, not a US-based company. We had a significant amount of uh, traffic and uh, completely out of the control of the US government. And, you know, we were growing rapidly. We were doubling our size almost every year. And uh, mega, uh, mega Upload and its sister sites would have grown significantly and by now would probably be, you know, uh, the leader in, in, in broadband traffic around the world. But, you know, they shut us down. Um, we're going to take a question. Yeah, what's your name? Yeah. Introduce yourself first. Hi, I'm Marianne from the International Business Times. I've been trying to get an I... interview with you for ages, Kim. All right, <laughs> you will get one. I've turned up to say hello. <laughs> um, you will get like one. You will get one. I would like to know how it's going with Mega, which is your more legal enterprise, and how that's <laughs> going. Well, actually, Mega Upload was just as legal, uh, but let me give you an update about Mega. Um, it now has 15 million registered users. Uh, 350 gigabits of bandwidth is being utilized uh, in average, so that's about three times the amount of bandwidth that all of New Zealand is using when everyone is online. So uh, it's certainly now New Zealand's largest internet company in terms of users and uh, bandwidth utilization. Um, you know, we're trying to list the company here on the New Zealand Stock Exchange. We have uh, signed a merger agreement with an already listed company, and that is uh, in process. And hopefully, you know, once the company is listed, uh, we're going to see a rise in its valuation. Um, the value of the listing uh, with the merger is around 210 million, and our expectation is that that's really going to go uh, very well. Perfect. But, Next. As, but, but, but let me add, as of today, I don't have a single share uh, in Mega. Uh, the, you know, the family trust that controls uh, the shares in Mega is now completely in the control of my wife and uh, my five children who are all the beneficiaries. And I had uh, to do that and I was happy to do that because Hollywood uh, has tried to attack the new assets that were generated after the raid. So as you know, the US government has seized everything 
uh, you know, that was created up until the raid, all monies, all uh, valuables were seized in all different jurisdictions. And uh, after I started the Internet Party and invested in a political movement, uh, the MPAA then started suing me civilly uh, to try and have those assets, restra those assets restrained as well. And that is the situation I'm in. So I'm officially broke right now. Well, maybe we'll get some more users to make upload. Yes, new question. Hey, Kim. Hi. Hey, Kim, it's Jack Hittery. How you doing? Hi, Jack. Que question is about uh, China and many countries in the Middle East are still censoring their internet, controlling the internet, shutting it down when they want to, uh, when there's political unrest, things like that. In your view, five years from now, 10 years from now, will that still be the case, or do you see eventually uh, complete electronic freedom across the world. Do you think these countries will be able to hold on to that kind of censorship and control even five, ten years from now? I don't think so because I think uh, t technology will evolve, and uh, you know that we now that we know that the governments are spying on us and that they are trying to restrict our freedoms and to control us, uh, we can uh, create and use technologies to prevent that. The best, of course, is encryption and communicating encrypted and even surfing the web encrypted and uh, you know mega for example when you upload files there they are fully encrypted in transit in your browser you don't even have to install anything it just happens on the fly and uh, you know that's why people like it it's lightning fast and at the same time you know that the files that you store with us are encrypted and us as a service provider we don't even know what you store with us and you see more and more of these technologies from all kinds of different uh, uh, companies and uh, you know i think the answer to censorship and mass surveillance is encryption so everyone should use it thank you any next question Hands up, yes. Lady down in the front. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emma. Um, I just wanted to ask, given everything that you stand for and everything, um, the freedom that you believe in, looking back on where you are now, would you have done anything differently in order to further maybe those causes? Or, I mean, because you seem fairly unrepentant about a lot of things. Did you get the question, Kim? Yeah, I get it. Um, would I have done things differently? Of course. And, uh, you know, you always, uh, you know, learn from events that happen in your life and you look back and, uh, you know, I think every person has had a number of these events in their lives where they just, you know, wish they would have done things differently. Uh, my biggest regret is that uh, I haven't taken the threat of the copyright lobby and the MPAA serious enough. I thought that uh, because of court decisions uh, that we have been monitoring around the world where our competitors like RapidShare and other sites that did exactly what we did were winning in court, in civil court proceedings, where YouTube was winning against Viacom, you know, uh, uh, our sense was that we are protected by the DMCA, that we are protected by the law, that there are uh, cases that have been ruled on that are in our favor, and no one ever for a minute thought that anyone would bring any criminal action against us. We had an in-house legal counsel, we had uh, three outside firms working for us, and not once, and they have reviewed our sites uh, completely, not once has any of them suggested any uh, criminal risk at all. So it was a big surprise and I wish I would have known uh, that there is any kind of risk because then uh, we probably uh, would have done things differently. Thank you. Uh, question over there. Hi Kim, uh, I wanted to know what do you think about Bitcoin and uh, decentralization? Do you think it has any part in uh, getting out of censorship, uh, etc.? I mean Bitcoin is great, it's fantastic. You know, I think uh, it has a great future ahead of it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting you know, innovations around the blockchain and new uh, products uh, coming out around that. So, 
you know, I have been following the developments and I think the rise of Bitcoin is just another example of how powerful the internet is and uh, that we have to protect it and we have to protect such innovations, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, right now the government knows every single transaction you do, every, every credit card payment, every bank wire transfer, you know, everything is monitored and stored for many, many years and if anybody wants to know what you do with your life and with your financials, they can look it up, you know, and Bitcoin uh, is uh, the answer. It's a possibility for you to transact in private, and I think that's important. You know, if you go to a shop and you pay somewhere in cash, uh, you know, that's also not being traced. So why not have a similar method on the internet where you can uh, transact in private? I think it's a good trend, and I think it's only going to increase. Thank you. Um, down in the front, we have slightly more than four people now for you, Kim. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Hi there, James Cook from Business Insider. Um, there was a New Zealand Herald article published last week which paints quite a bleak picture of you right now, and I saw you're very angry with that. Um, what, what is different about what they say about you? They say so you're sort of stuck at home, living there, not able to go outside. What was wrong in that article? Yeah, what I uh, thought was wrong was uh, that they said I'm, I'm a lonely man here alone in my mansion, and uh, they say my kids have moved out. And that's completely wrong. My kids are living with me, you know, I'm playing with them every day. I'm a happy man despite all the things that are happening to me because of my kids. And I think if they were not around, it would probably be much darker. I have to tell you, you know, this battle, uh, having been in it for almost three years, is quite exhausting. It has, uh, you know, taken a lot of resources, a lot of time and energy. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, I'm being unfairly uh, persecuted here in New Zealand uh, now also by the media because I engaged uh, you know politically and I tried to change things on the political uh, arena and that unfortunately backfired before I started my uh, political movement the internet party I was quite popular in New Zealand and uh, uh, you know, everyone was kind of uh, uh, assisting me and voting, uh, you know, for me and, and cheering for me to, to win my case. And uh, after I got involved in politics and the prime minister of New Zealand and his party attacking me viciously, uh, labeling me a Nazi, you know, and uh, labeling me all kinds of things, uh, that, that I'm only starting my political party uh, to, to fight my extradition, and that it has nothing to do with internet freedom and that there are all kinds of ulterior motives and things like that. And New Zealanders, unfortunately, they have bought into that narrative. And today I'm a pariah, you know, the witch hunt worked and everyone wants to see me burn. And next Thursday I might go to jail because of that. Thank you. Next question over on the far left, please. Thank you. Um, Andrew Gerard from uh, Light Minds here. Um, Tim Berners-Lee has recently called for governments uh, around the world to do more to protect users' privacy. Um, he may seem to be an unlikely ally, but um, what kind of support are you getting from other sectors um, uh, in business and uh, in industry? And what are you doing to harness those to try and help you in your defense? Yeah. So uh, if you go to my website, kim.com, you will see that there are a no no number of people that have spoken out uh, uh, on my case. Uh, the most prominent one is Steve Wozniak, who has given a lengthy interview and said, you know, you don't shut down the post office because me people are mailing bad stuff. And so they shouldn't have shut down mega upload. Uh, actually, in the US, uh, is a very famous uh, Supreme Court decision uh, around Sony, uh, where Sony created, you all remember that, the Betamax recorder, which later became, you know, the VHS uh, video recorder. And Hollywood was attacking that technology at the time because they said, uh, you know, this is only going to be used for piracy and people are going to copy all these movies and, and use that technology to watch that stuff for free. And the Supreme Court came back with a decision and said, this is a dual-use technology. 
that can be used uh, to pirate and to infringe on copyright, but it can also be used legitimately. And the legitimate purpose outweighs uh, the illegitimate one. And that's why we say, you know, this technology cannot be banned and Sony won. And we all thought this would apply to us as well. You know, we are a dual use technology. Yes, people can use Mega Upload to upload a movie and share it, but we have always taken it down. We had 100% takedown compliance, and we even gave Hollywood studios direct lead access so they can remove links that they thought were infringing on their material. So for us, you know, all of this. Uh, is is incredible that this is even possible. It's kind of uh, uh, the the same story like with Iraq. You know, the weapons of mass destruction, and either you're with us or you're against us. The U.S. government is using their power and abusing their power and lying out of their teeth the maliciousness of this case and how they have constructed it and uh, the indictment. You know, how many inaccuracies are in there and the the lies that are in there and 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 messages that are taken out of context. It's just so dirty. Now you know there's no ethics anymore. I don't. I've lost my faith in law in the judicial system. You know it's all just who pays wins. And next question, going to the gentleman in the middle. Thank you. I have two questions. Firstly, uh, good luck with your trial. I'll uh, I'll send you a card. What would you like? <laughs> send me a photo of a cat. <laughs> All right. Everyone loves cats. Um, the second question. Uh, obviously, it sounds really negative, and I, I think there's a lot of negativity around political systems at the minute, but there are emergent political movements and parties based around, I guess, culture and the Internet. If you were to project yourself <coughs> excuse me, in, in, into the future, say, five or ten years, what would your positive view of the political landscape be? The positive view, I think we are, we are heading into a really dark time. I mean, maybe I'm just influenced by what's happening to me. I probably am, so don't take my word for it. But I have to say what I'm observing happening around the world is, is really uh, you know, quite dark. And I'm, I'm not optimistic about the, uh, about the future, especially with this uh, you know, empire, the United States. Uh, uh, causing all these issues around the world, you know, they went to Iraq and try, uh, you know, and 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 bring peace to that country, and now we have uh, the ISIS uh, waging, you know, a terror state there, and uh, you know, er everything that they have touched turned into, into a disaster, and uh, you know, it's just uh, the trend right now. Look at what's happening, um, you know, with our rights. I mean, the the U.S. government is spying on every single individual on the planet. It, even though the Human Rights Charter of the United Nations says that every human being has a right to privacy, you know, the U.S. Uh, Jimmy Carter said the U.S. government is in breach of 50 percent of all human rights uh, uh, entitlements under the U.N. Charter. You know, they're breaking international law on a daily basis, and they're getting away with more and more of these things. And I think that's a scary trend, you know. And I have to say I observe the same thing here in New Zealand. Uh, the prime minister actively involved with his GCSB spy uh, agency and mass surveillance in New Zealand. The proof was provided by, you know, Edward Snowden and Glenn Greenwald. Uh, uh, at an event here in New Zealand, and even though he lied to the public and uh, said that uh, you know they didn't at all get involved in mass surveillance, you know he was re-elected. So I mean, for me, it's it's like yeah, well, what else, what else can you do? You know, you show uh, uh, that uh, these politicians are playing uh, an unethical game, that they are lying to us, and uh, there are no consequences to it. So that is to me. Uh, uh, you know, a sign that is that is not really positive. Next question down at the front, please. Hi, Kim. I'm Tom O'Connor of CheckFrame.com. Given hi. what, you, hi. Um, given what you've been through, when they ask, or uh, at the point when when the, when you're put into this situation, what advice will you give to your kids about their career and, and their future? <laughs> Don't start a cloud storage business. You know? <laughs> Become a lawyer. Lawyers will always make money, I can tell you that. 
You know, uh, I would probably. Well. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. No further feedback on that, or more feedback? No, become become a lawyer. I would tell my kids to become lawyers. You know, you, you can't lose being a lawyer. You know, either you make the law that people break or you defend them for breaking it, you win. I mean, it's like this is a total no-brainer. And, uh, you know, uh, just look at what's, what's, what's happening. You know, I mean, you, you start something that is a technology and innovation. You know, when I started Mega Upload, it was all about circumventing the limitations of attaching large files to emails. You have all experienced that, you know. A number of years ago, you wanted to attach a 10 megabyte file, and the email would bounce, and it wouldn't work. And Mega Upload was a solution to that problem. And yeah, it became a phenomenon, and it became huge, but it started as a very simple technology. You know, click upload, get a link, email the link if you want, or share it on a forum or whatever. So how can someone who created a very simple technology like that, who has actually made 50 million people happy every day, now face 88 years in prison? That's what my indictment says. And they're not just saying, uh, you know, I'm a copyright infringer, uh, even though, you know, it's, it's secondary. They are saying, I am a conspiracy. Me and my co-defendants are a mafia organization, and we have created this, in, uh, uh, this entire business and the website for the purpose only of committing copyright infringement. And I mean, any, anyone who has half a brain and has ever used Mega Upload knows that that's nonsense. So yeah, uh, become lawyers, I'm telling you. That's a good job. Uh, last few questions, just a show of hands so we know where to go next, conscious of time. Sorry? Hi. Yeah. Uh, it's Marianne again. Um, I'm just bringing up a point from earlier. Um, you know how the FBI and now the Department of Justice are saying, you know, encryption, iOS 8, bad idea, bad idea. You're going to have dying children everywhere. Um, what do you think about that? Because I think you mentioned a point earlier to do with encryption. Well, if you don't want dying children, then stop drone strikes on families and weddings. You know, I mean, that is... Uh, uh, a crime that we should talk about when we talk about dying children. No one is dying because of encryption. You know, S uh, people will be safe from uh, their governments that are spying on them. You know, now in Australia, you have a law where you can't even uh, uh, release information about the government anymore, even though it shows, uh, you know, the government has been breaking the law. You go to jail as a whistleblower. You know, that was unheard of. So today, a journalist in Australia, in order to not get uh, into a situation where he might face jail, has to use encryption and has to protect their communications. There, aren't, there is no choice. And more and more of the human rights organizations are pointing out how the governments are getting more and more aggressive in attacking uh, people that are speaking the truth. Today, you go to jail for revealing the truth. And that can't be that can't be right, you know. Especially if the truth means that a government has been breaking the law, you know, on a systematic uh, basis uh, against a number of laws, and then even lying to Congress or you know their political uh, bodies or parliaments about it. And that's the reality we're living in today. So yeah, man, absolutely, you need to protect yourself with encryption and uh, the excuse not to use encryption because it might be used by, you know, child molesters or terrorists or, or the like, that's total nonsense because you can just go out in the street today, meet someone in a cafe and have a private conversation that no one can listen to and you should have the same possibility on the internet. Why not? Why shouldn't you be able to have private uh, conversations? And if there is enough evidence uh, to, uh, you know, surveil someone, well then go and get a warrant and find out of it, uh, about it first before you, you know, blanket surveil the entire world to find your targets. I don't think, you know, that's right, that's the wrong way around and that needs to change. Thank you. We're going to take one last question from the gentleman in blue. Uh, hi, Kim. I'm Travis Leon. Uh, I'm actually a lawyer, and I wouldn't recommend becoming a lawyer <laughs> to anybody. 
They get paid <laughs> okay. well, but it's not very fulfilling, I can assure you. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm out of that now. I was just wondering whether you feel that, uh, I suppose, the persecution by the American government of what you've done and what you're doing is going to act as a sufficient deterrent, which is what I guess they're trying to achieve, or do you think you might go down as more of a, I suppose you would hope more of a martyr and encourage people to, to take your place and take, take on your struggle? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I have to go through this pain, right? But in 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 years, people will be looking back at this and they will, will be shaking their heads. You know, they will be shaking their heads just like we shake our heads today about people who were burning books in the past or people who were killing scientists who told us that the earth is round and is circling around the sun. People were killed for that. Uh, and today when we read this stuff we shake our heads and the same thing is going to happen about this case I'm absolutely uh, certain of that uh, unfortunately you know I'm in this time I'm dealing with these issues and I don't think this will go away anytime soon uh, because you know nobody really cares that's the biggest problem today you know they get away with this stuff and no one is doing anything about it and uh, you know my fight has been going on for three years but you, won't, you can only fight so long. You know, I've spent over $10 million on lawyers, and sooner or later you just run out of uh, oxygen. You know? And the legal strategy by the United States government was not uh, to test the merits of the case. They have been uh, you know, uh, delaying my extradition hearings. Let me give you an example. Um, when they raided our home, uh, they took my computers and my hard drives and then didn't give me access to my data for 1,000 days. I never got a clone of my uh, data to prepare myself for the extradition hearing. And the excuse that they gave was that uh, they want to have the encryption codes first before they provide anything. And uh, it turns out today that they had the encryption codes uh, all along and that this was just uh, you know, a strategy, a total abuse of process uh, to to basically delay things. I don't think they had any intent to have this case uh, heard on the merits uh, soon in the United States. And another important fact that a lot of people don't know, when I got out on bail uh, in New Zealand about a month after the raid, my legal team wrote a letter to the Department of Justice and said, if you grant us the same conditions that we now have in New Zealand, bail and funds for legal defense, all the defendants are going to get on a plane and fly to the United States to face these charges. And they refused. They were not interested in that. And, you know, that's, that's the kind of uh, system that I'm fighting. You know, it's just not fair. It's totally the, 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 the game is rigged and uh, it's all very unfortunate. Kim, listen, we're, we're up out of time. I, I just want to say thank you on behalf of us all. Uh, there's a big audience here nodding and smiling and listening to you. I think uh, just so they can all hear. Can we have a big round of applause for Kim so we can hear? <laughs> Thanks once again for your time, Kim. Much appreciated.